For the last year, special observances around the state honored a man whose name many Oklahomans may not even recognize. Ralph Ellison's 100th birthday celebration may have ignited renewed interest in his work in his home state. Ellison left a lasting mark on the world of literature by writing about growing up black in Oklahoma. Ralph Ellison was a product of Oklahoma City's Deep Deuce, an area that was once the heartbeat of black segregated Oklahoma City, home to its business community, music, and arts. He was raised in poverty and on jazz music. He rode freight trains to get to the Tuskegee Institute of Music in Alabama as a young man, and then moved to New York City, where his musical career transformed into a writing career. At his most famous work, the National Book Club winning novel, The Invisible Man. Until now, the only honor paid to Ralph Ellison in his hometown was the dedication of a library in his name in the traditionally black neighborhoods of Northeast Oklahoma City, a place where his name and his work remain on prominent display. Bob Blackburn is director of the Oklahoma Historical Society. He sees in Ellison's most famous work, the places and people of Oklahoma City through the years of segregation. Jim Crow segregation was a cancer on society. It affected not only the black population, but it affected the white population with planting the seeds of fear in hatred, in misunderstanding, uh, in really weakening the entire community by dividing it. This was the world that Ralph Ellison grew up in. Blackburn says Ellison witnessed the birth of a true American art form that initially put him on the path to greatness and became the subject of one of his essays later in life. This totally American art form, and he was at the perfect place as a musician to understand that because out of Oklahoma City comes the Blue Devils that would then move to Kansas City and become the Count Basie Band. And out of this comes the jazz movement in America. And he explains it better than anyone that, that I've ever read. Blackburn says Oklahoma is just now beginning to realize the genius of Ralph Ellison. We celebrate athletic achievement. Uh, we celebrate even military achievement. A lot of times we do not respond as well to artistic achievement. The culmination of the year-long birthday celebration was at the state capitol, where a portrait of Ellison now hangs, a two-year-long project directed by State Senator David Holt. I really came to understand how far Ralph Ellison had risen when I went to college uh, a long way from home. I went out to, to D.C. at George Washington University, and I signed up for a class solely dedicated to Ralph Ellison. The Invisible Man is still considered one of the greatest 50 books in American literature, and Senator Holt says Ellison's portrait should have been in the Capitol a long time ago. It took a while for Oklahoma City to fully embrace Ralph Ellison. Um, they did name the library after him, and blessedly that was while he was still alive and he was able to attend the, the groundbreak or the ribbon cutting for that. And, and that's a great thing, and I'm glad that that happened. But other than that, you know, it, it took, it took uh, years for him to be inducted into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. It was actually done posthumously. And because of that, Holt, along with others, have now created the Ralph Ellison Foundation. We really see two twin purposes of the foundation, to, to continue to kind of spread the name of Ralph Ellison, particularly in Oklahoma, and try to make sure that where there are opportunities to remind people of, of his greatness, that we can do that and then secondarily to do good works in his name, particularly in the areas of literacy. Senator Holt is the president of the foundation that will continue to bring new light to the work of a great American writer. This is the one thing, you know, that uh, really moves forward and uh, I think it's, it's hopefully the most lasting legacy of this centennial year. In the 60s, Ralph Ellison was interviewed about his writing and he appeared somewhat nervous to be on camera, knowing well how others might take what he was saying. And I'm also aware that uh, for all my uh, shunning of a public role which uh, is divorced from my identity as a writer, any kind of uh, statement that I make, any time my face appears, uh, there are a lot of people who are going to be uh, interpreting uh, my face, my statements in terms of my racial identity rather than in terms of the quality of what I have to say. And Ellison's words also ring loudly today about what happens when a writer's work becomes a commentary on national politics. 
usually when a writer becomes a political spokesman, he speaks out of context. He doesn't have the, the discipline uh, forces uh, behind him. He leads nobody, really. Uh, there's no one to say no to him. He floats on a sea of publicity and uh, uh, on the uh, uh, easy availability of uh, the big media, so to speak. To track the ongoing efforts to bring new awareness to the works of Ralph Ellison, go online to www.ralphellisonfoundation.org.